Hi, I'm Rob Sherwood, CTO at Big Switch Networks, and now I'm going to talk about the integration that we have between our Big Cloud Fabric product and VMware. So, we have great support for OpenStack, but not just support for OpenStack. We've got actually really interesting support for VMware as well. So, we have integration that we're going to show a demo of with vSphere. Uh, we also have some nice integration with NSX. We're not going to have a chance to show that demo. We've got it online for YouTube if people want to see it. Um, we can integrate with vSphere directly. Um, we can integrate with vSphere just as a data plane fabric. Um, we also have support for VMware's OpenStack. So we're kind of trying to cover the, the gamut there. So when, uh, when NSX does actually open up the OVSDB it's for the controllers, right. are you planning on using hardware-based VTEPs for that? that? That's the plan. Okay. Um, you know, I think I will just skip directly to your demo side. Sure. In the interest of time. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Sayed Gayur. I'm the senior system engineer here. And uh, the plan is to give you a quick demo on how we do integration with uh, VMware. Uh, we essentially do the integration through the vCenter. So we, uh, we, the way you register with the vCenter and then we get all the intelligence like around when some VMware administrator create a network, we go ahead and understand that, okay, that VLAN, that network has been created. So we dynamically provision the top of the rack switches accordingly. And as you deploy a VM uh, on that particular port group or essentially on that VLAN, so we provision that VLAN on that uh, top of the rack switch. As you move the VM from one host to another host, maybe from rack one, to probably rack 16, uh, we will go ahead and dynamically change the network policy so that the new provisioning is on uh, top of the rack switch on rack 16 instead of rack 1. And then if there is no more VM on that VLAN on rack 1, so that particular, particular provisioning will be removed from the rack 1 top of the rack switch. So you keep removing it as VMs, yes, and then spin it back up when when it's required. Something moves. And as Rob was mentioning around the big cloud fabric, how we do auto discovery on uh, the physical fabric links, which is the leaf spine links. And once we do this integration, we will show you how all the server side links, the ESX host links coming to our top of the rack switches, are automatically detected, and we form the lag accordingly. So do you have like your own DVS with its own uplinks into this? Yes, so when we, when we integrate, so the way we integrate is that we turn on the LLDP on the, on the DVS or vSwitch. So based on that, they are advertising the ESX host name. And when the same host name is received on both the links or multiple links, we group them together. But your uplinks, they don't directly talk to the controller somehow, some way, right? Like some kind of like software-based switch in the DVS? Mm -hmm. oh. we use the, the stock DVS, we just use the controller okay. to configure it. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have your own DVS. This yeah. is no. not a third-party one. This yeah. is one that is VMware's integrated DVS. Yeah. Okay. And then that would just, the, the, the data plane connection is to our physical fabric. So that would go from the, the, the server to the top of rack. Okay, and you just use what LLDP to discover? Exactly. Okay. A, a, a site and then all the changes are just pushed through vCenter mm -hmm. for the configs. And then what's great about this, well, the thing that makes this work is that vCenter has really nice uh, APIs that actually post callbacks to us. So as you, as you make a change on the console, the controller gets a notification. Now, so uh, what we will start by, we will start by registering ourselves with the vCenter and we can support, today we can support multiple of those vCenters and as of the shipping release we have tested 20 vCenters. Uh, so with one big cloud fabric you can go up to 20 vCenters which we are currently testing and supporting but from the software limit you can go more. <laughs> I'm simply associating this particular vCenter with a tenant. And now all the networks which will be created or all the VLANs which will be created for uh, within that vCenter will be associated with, the, with this tenant.
Can you have multiple tenants within a single vCenter? Uh, not today. Okay. It's one to one. Okay. I could get expensive. So you can see the moment I registered uh, to the vCenter, now I have from the network admin perspective, I know all the ESX hosts which are connected to the fabric and also I have the inventory of the VMs which are on those hosts and I can see that right now the attachment points are still down since we are still learning uh, all the ESX hosts which are connected to us it will converge in a few seconds and then we will have all these attachment points as up that all uh, these VMs are connected and the information we are getting is around okay we have a VM1 he is on ESX host 1 connected to this particular port group and then the port group is where all these links fabric links are connect, sorry the server links are connected to those uh, uplink leaf switches and here under the port group you can see all these port groups have been uh, configured automatically via LLDP Sorry. and we have all the information which vCenter this uh, ESX host belongs to then what protocol we are using to bring those links up and how these are connected around the racks some are connected in rack 2 some are connected in rack 1 so nothing has been configured manually as such to bring the server side links as well Okay. Before you registered with vCenter, this page would have been empty. Yes. As soon as you connected, it started to pick all this information. So it's dynamically yeah. Yeah. Very populating. Dynamic. What I'll do, I'll delete the vCenter before exiting. So you can see all of them will go away. What about the VLAN IDs for the VMs? I mean, don't you need the information to be able to, um, to prune the links for the VMs that don't exist on the server? Yeah. So, uh, the provisioning of those VLANs, the server admin will be doing. So, he will go ahead and create a port group, he will create a VLAN essentially, right? That VLAN will dynamically be provisioned based on which VM we are associating with the VLAN. So, let's say I, I will log into that vCenter and I will show you, I will associate a VM and I will we'll go back and see that where this particular VM resides and how we have provisioned that. So you're not actually configuring the VLANs on the DVS? Yes. Big Cloud Fabric will not be configuring, like the controller, physical okay, controller. So if I go in here and create a new tenant and say, create it's this VLAN. It's a pull, VLAN. not a push. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So eventually, is that going to go? You know, it's actually a religious thing for which direction the data should go. Right. At least, you know, for what we're seeing is, you know, so do you want your server admin to have to wait on the network admin or vice versa? And now, is that the same scenario in OpenStack? Or are you actually, because of your control over OVS? So in OpenStack, you know, the, everybody's on the same page. The control comes from the OpenStack controller. Exactly. Like, so the question is, you know, who wins in a disagreement? Right? Right. And the OpenStack controller wins. The, the server admin is used to vCenter winning, in my, my opinion. And this is, so if I'm doing NS, NSX, same scenario. Same scenario. Okay. Because NSX is also programming vCenter. Right. So you're not talking to the NSX manager and doing all the. We do actually get additional information from them with the NSX integration, but that's not demoed okay. here. Okay. So now uh, I have a port group already created. Uh, so I can just pick one test port group here. Let's say test. I'm um, having a VLAN 666 as my VLAN for this port group and I'm attaching a DB1 as my VM. Now if I go back on my endpoints, I can go into the advanced filters and just quickly filter out based on a VLAN. VLAN 
I believe I didn't do the connect. You didn't connect the uh, yes. interface. Yes. You shouldn't have used 666. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Probably that's why. <laughs> so I, let me just go ahead and. Yes. Okay, let's try. Since everybody was saying do not use 666, so I have moved to 777. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now it works. <laughs> and now you have James Bond. Well, there was something with 666. <laughs> Actually, I tested with 777, so I thought, okay, let me just come back to 777. Uh, so here you can see that uh, this particular endpoint is learned on, uh, and we even have the description on the endpoint that this name of the VM is DB-1. It, it resides on ESX33, and that's the port group, essentially. The port group is defined by the host name. And the host name defines like, okay, this is ESX33. So I can go ahead and uh, do a VM migration from host 33 to let's say 31 and see if basically the same information will be moved only for the endpoint on uh, host uh, 31. While you're clicking through that, let me just uh, voice over this a little bit. So is it clear what's going on here? So there's network state that's in vCenter that our controller is dynamically pulling out. It's what the physical host is, the name of the VM, the network information. And as he's doing this VM migration, we actually get a call back into the controller, and we are adapting to the change of state. So we're actually going to move that entire segment, which only exists for that host, to the new location. Sure. So like when you are not, the, the definition of the network or the consumption of the network is done through the vCenter virtual network management. Uh, but at the back end, you can define policies. Like let's say for inter-segment communication, you can define those policies on the logical router basis that what can connect to where from the network admin perspective. While you are providing the agility to the vCenter admin, at the same time, the network admin has the control how this network will uh, communicate to the northbound and we will move to here you can see this is 33 I'll go ahead and refresh it moved to uh, 32 host 31 host and there is nothing which is available on uh, VLAN 777 or any other host because that's the only VM which is available on the network on the fabric side and if I move on the visibility analytics side here we have the pre-CAN dashboards available for the vCenter and I can go into the vMotion and you can see there were vMotions were done like pretty much around this time and that visibility is available that vMotion occurred around 2.16, one minute back. And it can even tell you like, okay, which tenant, uh, the tenant was vCenter-01. And then if you look at the VM name, it was DB-01, which was moved at exactly this particular time. So that kind of visibility is available through Fabric Analytics. Uh, in addition to the Fabric in general, that special enhancements which we did for the VM, VMware integration, we gave those CAN dashboards so that you can quickly go and look at different aspects of VM networking when we integrate with the VMware. So Rob, you said the, the single vCenter deployments, that's you, 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 um, 
w I guess in the absence of NSX, you ca that is not multi-tenant capable, at least today? Uh, so anyway, like, think of it this way. vCenter itself does not really have a notion of tenancy. Sure. So the question is, how do we map the things that vCenter understands into the right. things that Big Cloud Fabric understands? And we actually debated a lot of this internally, but it, so I think that the end result is what we have is probably the right thing, at least for now, which is we'll take everything in a vCenter instance and map that into one tenant. Okay. And so if you have multiple vCenter instances, you can map those into different tenants. But conceivably, you could just as easily say, well, whenever, like, if I create a logical network and you tell me what VLAN tag is, is present there, Sorry. I could recognize that tag and treat it as a different tenant. And, and so, meaning it would go to another logical We have a, a different way of integrating with vCenter, which we, we haven't really demoed here, which is think of it as the, the uh, an information siloed way, which is you tag traffic however you want. Mm -hmm. You don't do the vCenter integration that, that Syed is showing. Right. And then we just consume VLAN tags and, and forward traffic around. And then you can actually, you can force the multi-tenancy any way that you want using okay. that. Now, can I use the migrate VMs between tenants, vCenters, using this, or just use traditional methods of? So you'd have to use traditional methods. Okay. And so what's nice about this is the tenant, the, 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 the network state migration happens automatically when you, when you integrate the controller with the vCenter. Right. If you don't do that, if you're doing something like what Matt was suggesting, then you wouldn't have the ability to do that. Okay. Do you, do you have any layers of orchestration like in VRO or you know VCO, whatever they call it this week? With the <laughs> um, have any layers of orchestration that would take a, a VLAN, map it to a VNI, and then create a DV port group for that? I don't know off the top of my head. Do you? So uh, right now our integration is with vCenter. So if there is anything which is getting a, a provision on the abstraction, the upper layer, where if they are dynamically creating a port group with a certain VLAN, uh, then we will dynamically provision that uh, port okay. group. So, so when you map that VNI to VLAN, a DB port group gets created automatically is what you're saying? Yes. So it's orchestrated? In, in, in terms of NSX, uh, we, will, we have the VTAP to uh, VM uh, visibility so that we know which VMs are associated with which VTAP to transfer the traffic for the logical switches. And then we provide the, all the underlay troubleshooting from end to end, like from that VTAP to the source VTAP to the destination VTAP, uh, just like Rob showed you uh, the fabric trace, the test path. So we will provide you the entire test path. And at the same time, you will have the visibility on which VM is essentially connected to which VTAP from the physical world perspective. So you make sure that the underlay network end to end is available from the policy perspective, from routing perspective, and then you can look into uh, the overlay network as such. Again, it's it's think of it as a, we we have a, we're a pull mechanism, not a push. So you would have to map the VLAN to VNI, and then you know, if, depending on where you work, uh, the, the virtual administrator has to create a DV port group for it. Correct? It's yeah. not orchestrated at this point. Yeah. Okay. And here, uh, I think uh, I was hoping there would be a question: is why we twenty you know vCenters we are testing? We we in fact have a. Uh, a cloud provider who is a customer who is deploying this and providing one vSphere instance per tenant. And so it's a multi vSphere, multi tenant uh, hosted service. And so they are providing an air gap, not at L2, not only at L3, but also at the vCenter layer. And, uh, and that's, you know, and that provider does not have to do anything. Uh, the tenants are creating the VMs, creating port groups on vCenter, and the rest of the network, uh, you know, is automatically configured completely zero touch to them. So, so that's been the real uh, benefit. I'll end up by just cleaning the VMware vCenter configuration. So let me just quickly go ahead and remove the vCenter. Then if I go back to the port groups here, yeah, so all those port groups which were dynamically learned have been removed because there is no longer an integration with the with that particular vCenter. So even though they are sending us LLDPs, but since we do not have the integration, we cleaned it up. <laughs>